So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Vilnius. We have had, we have just uh, closed the informal meeting of ministers, EU ministers responsible for cohesion policy. And we have discussed the new issues of this policy uh, in the forthcoming period. As you perfectly know, last week there was an agreement reached uh, between the Council and European Parliament on all the set of uh, cohesion policy regulations. Uh, they will be formalized, will, take, will be taken as formal decisions in the first days uh, of December and will come into full force. Uh, but uh, as always, uh, the most important issue is implementation. Uh, and since we have uh, uh, quite new novel issues uh, in the cohesion policy framework, European cohesion policy framework in the new financing period, uh, we had to discuss how to manage with them. Uh, particularly uh, uh, four, uh, four topics were under discussion. Uh, first of all, thematic concentration. That means that clear priorities should be selected in the countries uh, for the European money to be invested. Uh, ex ante conditionalities, so the countries should ensure that there exists a strategic basis uh, for further investment of European money. Uh, and uh, mm, uh, then uh, better coordination on of funds and policies, uh, which would ensure some synergy, which is not a trivial task uh, to be uh, performed, a synergy between funds. And uh, mm, of course, uh, of course, uh, uh, another quite uh, uh, important issue: m measurable indicators that should be achieved by investing uh, European money. Uh, one of the uh, main ideas that I do like uh, very much is uh, that our priority in Europe should be investment rather than better spending. Uh, until now, we talked about better spending, but if invested, uh, this money can leverage uh, additional private sources, and um, uh, this could enhance uh, the efficiency of the cohesion policy. Uh, many different issues have been discussed, uh, and the uh, uh, presidency will uh, uh, formulate some conclusions. Uh, but uh, now I uh, give the floor to Commissioner Johannes Hahn, who will explain in more detail what the new cohesion policy could mean for us. Thank you very much, Harry Mantas, uh, um, dear Danuta. Uh, colleagues, uh, first of all, I would like to thank you and to congratulate uh, our Lithuanian ho uh, um, hosts uh, for the organizing of this uh, conference and also for the whole setting of the conference. I think it was, again, a very, very fruitful discussion. And uh, as it was rightly said, we could uh, adopt uh, last week in the European Parliament uh, after two year uh, negotiations, this uh, very comprehensive reform, I would say the most significant reform since uh, the introduction of uh, uh, cohesion regional policy around 40 years ago, and we could build uh, on achievements of the current period uh, by where we have for the first time an alignment uh, of uh, the uh, programs to the European strategy, namely the Lisbon strategy, and next period there will be a strong alignment uh, to the EU 2020 uh, growth agenda. Uh, I would like to, to thank both deci uh, uh, decision makers, the Council and the Parliament, and in particular the Lithuanian Presidency and the Chair of the um, um, relevant and leading committee of this issue, Danita Hübner, for the job they have done. It's uh, more by chance that I'm sitting in between. This is not uh, um, uh, demonstrating that there have been different views. I think uh, there have been different views, but uh, uh, both and including the Commission have been uh, dedicated to this reform. And of course, we had to discuss, uh, as there are certainly different angles uh, 
from which we can see some of the other points, but finally the achievements are there. And as it was rightly said, I think the main pillars of the reform are thematic concentration, um, ex ante conditionality, so it must be clear in certain areas, for instance, transport or support of SMEs, in which areas or what are the strategies behind uh, uh, a possible investment. And uh, thirdly, it's also about um, quantifiable results, which have to be agreed at the beginning of a period, which will be published. And so everybody can follow the implementation. It was rightly said, we are now talking about implementation. Maybe it's worth to recall that uh, the budget for the next period will be 325 billion euro, which is a slight decrease, but uh, we know this discussion about an overall reduction of the European budget and the structural funds ha had faced the lowest cuts uh, from all the different uh, budget lines. Uh, but I believe that together with the national um, co-financing, the overall impact will be around 500 million, a billion euro for the next uh, seven years, not taking into account the leverage effects by applying financial instruments, which might be an additional um, um, uh, amount, and uh, not taking in, into account, which I believe is the most important thing, the triggering effect for the private sector being now um, uh, um, reassured about the budget for seven years all around Europe for the different member states, and this hopefully will indeed trigger a lot of investments, and I also uh, thank you for emphasizing, uh, Rimantas, the, the new philosophy when we are talking about investment um, orientation. Of course, the concept of solidarity remained. It remained in the way that 70% of the overall budget will be spent to 25% of the less developed regions, and 30% will be spent, will be provided to the more developed or transition regions. Uh, another point I would like to highlight is that uh, there will also be a move from a focus on infrastructure investments towards the promotion of the economy. Of course, there will be also in the future um, in, in countries like uh, Lithuania uh, um, um, significant and fair share dedicated to infrastructure project because you certainly have still to catch up. But on the other hand, it's, uh, it's uh, undisputable that everywhere in Europe we have to invest in the economy. Uh, we have to promote uh, uh, the, 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 the funding of new companies. Uh, uh, give you an example. We have all around Europe 23 million small and medium-sized companies, and we have around 27 million unemployed people. So if only the existing uh, SMEs uh, would employ an additional unemployed person, the problem of unemployment would be really resolved. It's a ra rather naive calculation, of course, but on the other hand, it gives you a flavor about the impact and the, the, the relevance of SMEs. That's why we will double uh, the budget for the promotion of the economy from currently 70 billions to at least 140 billion euros around uh, Europe. And this will definitely contribute to further growth, to competitiveness, and therefore to safeguard and even better to create new jobs. Thank you. Uh, it has become a very good tradition at the informal ministerial meetings to have uh, very important uh, guests. And today uh, we welcomed uh, Professor Danuta Hübner, who is the chairwoman of the Regional Policy Committee of the European Parliament. So, uh, Danuta, you have the floor to add something. Uh, very much, and indeed I would like to, to say that I'm not only here because I was just invited, but because also for the first time in the history of European cohesion policy, the European Parliament uh, has been as legislator on equal footing with the e European Council, which is currently chaired by uh, your finance uh, minister. Uh, 
up to the previous edition of the policy, the European Parliament was giving the opinion on the, on the regulation. Now, uh, that's why we had all those difficult negotiations that lasted nearly two years, because we are uh, equal uh, co-legislators. That's, that's one thing which I would like to, to say um, uh, very clearly. Secondly, uh, we waited uh, with some nervousness uh, for the vote in the European Parliament last week in Strasbourg because the uh, finalization of the negotiations of the cohesion policy were also one, was one of the precondition to have a positive opinion of the Parliament on the entire budget for the seven years, on the entire multi-annual financial uh, framework, and that's why we are all very relieved when we saw that we got the majority for the policy regulation and we got also a big majority for the uh, new financial uh, framework. There was a big success, I think, also of Lithuania as, as uh, presidency. presidency. Certainly, I would like to say that when we were negotiating and, and agreeing finally on the final edition of the regulation for the cohesion policy, we, we had a double mission. One mission was to have really a, a good framework, good regulation, good uh, cohesion uh, policy uh, that would fit uh, the challenges, future challenges of Europe. And as you know, we, we desperately need growth, we need jobs, but we also need a more competitive European economy. And I think we have such a cohesion uh, policy thanks to joint uh, effort. But the second uh, mission that we had was also to do it on time so that we can start the the new wave of investment um, uh, as of 2nd January. We will be ready with the regulatory framework to have the new policy in, in place, and everything will depend on how well member states will be uh, prepared and finalize the concrete negotiations with the European um, uh, Commission. And firstly, um, uh, let me say that uh, a challenge for member states today when they are starting to, to, to implement the policy is also to finish um, to the last euro the current allocations because the, the commission will, be, uh, will, will continue with, uh, with the approval of the, of the projects. Uh, the policy will continue basically for two more years and only then the, the current period will be, will be closed, which means that there will be the years of overlapping. And, and this is an effort, but I think it's important not to, uh, not to forget about the need to complete the current uh, period. Fifthly, let me say that there are many important issues on which we share the views. There were some issues where uh, we had also differences between the Council, the Parliament and the Commission. But I think it was important for all of us that we have the policy for all the regions. And I think we, we, we managed to, uh, to, to have this. We, we have all the regions, the richer, the poor, working together, also sharing experience, cooperating through uh, also cooperation uh, instruments. So that was very, very important. We also agreed uh, that we will have three categories of regions. So not only the poor and the rich, but also regions in transition which is for many of the new member states an extremely important uh, also f uh, feature of the new uh, cohesion uh, policy. And uh, also let me, uh, let me say that one of the most important, it was mentioned as achievements and it was also very important for the parliament, that we will have a lot of rules come on for all the funds, not only regional, social, and cohesion, which is the cohesion policy, but also sharing the common rules with the Rural Areas Development uh, Fund, which I think for Lithuania is also important, and also the, the Mar Maritime and Fishery Fund, which is also, I think, important for uh, Lithuania. But we also have uh, in the regulation the, the provisions, the articles, pointing to the importance of a good uh, cooperation between the cohesion policy and other policies like Horizon 2020, which is investment and uh, uh, innovation uh, policy. And then there were many other issues on which we, we managed, I think, to find, uh, to find the best possible uh, compromises. So we are all, all happy, not only the Council, the Lithuanian Presidency, the Commission, but also Parliament is happy that we have finalized. Dear journalists, now is your time, but before you ask, I would like to say that we have interpretation here. It means, uh, especially I address um, uh, with my speech to my Lithuanian colleagues, if you would like to ask in Lithuania, please don't be hesitate to ask in Lithuania, in very beautiful Lithuanian language, okay? And now, who will be the first, but I would like to, 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 to say one more my request. Uh, when you are asking, please introduce yourself, okay? Who will be the first? Okay. 
Jo, jo. Artūras Ketlerius, Baltic News Service. Minister, can I ask you more about the results? What are the indicators? Could you expand more on the indicators? Would the specific added value of the invested funds be calculated? And what is the difference between the current indicators and the previous situation? Because it was required to have the added value. Well, previously, the programs were supposed to create added value, which was being measured, for example, in social areas by the number of people who have found a job, by the creation of new jobs, or, for example, by how many people received a certain training. Now, every project will have to be evaluated according to certain indicators, following certain indicators. We will have to defend these indicators, otherwise the project will not be ever eligible for EU funding. Our discussion today showed that in all member states, the indicators raise a certain problem. For example, because we have to have these indica indicators both ambitious and realistic. So it's hard to tell what is the exact level we should aim for to make the indicators ambitious and realistic. So when the new programs will be implemented as of 2014, we will see what works and what not, and the legal acts will be amended accordingly. Информационное агентство Рекс, город Москва. Скажите, пожалуйста, как правильно в русском варианте cohesion policy? Information agency, I would like to ask how it should be done in the right way. Did you discuss? different ways to prevent crisis that emerged in the past in Greece. Thank you. I don't think uh, people got proper translation because we don't ah, Nevertheless. <laughs> was about the prevention of further crisis so that we avoid situation like we had in, in Greece and I don't know who probably minister you would like to start on Maybe I would start answering to your first question and in this case we are talking about the uh, regional rapprochement policy. Uh, well, and uh, for the second question, of course, uh, this is not the issue of this council formation uh, to discuss uh, crises uh, in Europe because this is a very, very extensive uh, policy area, where, uh, well, which includes also creation of the banking union uh, that the Lithuanian presidency works toughly upon. Uh, this is already the question of the issue uh, being solved uh, in the ECOFIN Council, in the Council of Ministers of Economics and Finance. And here we had uh, cohesion policy, uh, ministers responsible for cohesion policy. But, of course, uh, cohesion policy also has uh, its goal uh, to ensure level playing field and the fundamentals of single market throughout Europe by uh, well, removing huge differences uh, between regions in Europe uh, that still exist. And I think this uh, efficiently adds to prevention of crisis uh, in the future. Maybe add before Commissioner will probably also want to add something. On this second issue, the relation, um, the, the example of Greece and how, to, how, how we are going to, to contribute to the uh, prevention of, of the type of, of crisis, uh, I, I think there is, of course, a link that there are all the major governance issues which are not coped with by cohesion policy, but one of the problems uh, that led to the uh, crisis was also that uh, not all of European economies are, are equally 
particularly competitive. We have a strongly divided Europe, and we have, uh, in, in, uh, in short, uh, the southern part of Europe, which, is, uh, which has mass, uh, ma much uh, weaker competitiveness capacity uh, to compete globally or even at the European level. And this policy is like tailor-made for this, because this policy is actually investing already now and will be investing even more in the future in all the factors which create competitiveness of the economies. This is also infrastructure, because if you don't have infrastructure in place, then nobody would go as an investor to the region where you cannot just access the, the region. But also we, we invest uh, with this policy, we'll be investing in the future as well in, in what, what is innovation, what is the capacity to um, have employment that will be sustainable, will not be lost tomorrow to the Chinese uh, market. Uh, so yes, this, this uh, policy will contribute to the competitiveness and will reduce the, the, the chances to enter into this kind of crisis uh, that has started in Greece and Europe. Now, on the, on the um, policy, uh, cohesion policy as a, as a mechanism to reduce the disparities of the development uh, uh, in the development level between the regions, this, is, this policy is all about it, and it does it through the mobilization of, of growth at regional and local uh, level. And we provide instruments, policy instruments and funding instruments for the regions to invest in what is their strengths, uh, to invest in their uh, capacity to create jobs and to be uh, competitive. And we see that regions which are poorer, they grow usually, the economy grows faster, and this way it also contributes to cohesion in the sense of reducing the, uh, the disparities. But we do it through the smart investment in, in growth at the regional um, uh, level and through the cooperation between the regions, because stronger regions can be locomotives for the weaker regions. And I will just give the floor to you. Yeah. This question gives me the opportunity to explain on a very concrete example the, what means ex ante conditionality. So we will ask, um, or if you like, we will demand from all the 274 regions of Europe to come forward with, I would say, at least an idea even better a strategy about um, uh, the areas where business activities should take place. What are the assets, what are the potential of each of the 274 regions in Europe? So what in many regions is already there, a kind of cluster policy, yeah? to have an idea about the strengths, the, the assets, the potentials. It's not everywhere. And um, if uh, you look into the economic structure and performance of some, in particular, Southern European countries, you will see that one reason of their um, uh, problems is uh, due to the very, very narrow scope of business activities. And therefore, one of the requests, one of the ex ante conditions will be to have a smart specialization strategy for each region, which means clearly each region should be aware about its um, focus in which business areas, in which uh, uh, branches uh, it should invest, it should concentrate its financial means. And if this works out <clears throat> after six, seven years, you would see a significant, not to say a tremendous effect on the performance of the European economy due to the use of structural funds. News Agency ELTA. Minister, I'm here on the right. <laughs> on your left, then. Well, which particular objectives of Lithuania will these funds help to achieve? And my next question is, what happens when Lithuania joins the Eurozone in terms of distribution? And next question is to the Commissioner. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> What concrete goals you would like to achieve in the end of new financial perspective with this investment? Well, when Lithuania jo joins the Eurozone, in terms of cohesion policy, nothing is going to change. We, as 
but tuo pačiu ir kaip Europos Sąjungos biudžeto member state which forms the budget are participating in the process but we are also not only the contributors but also the beneficiaries of the budget of the EU budget now these funds are invested in various areas I can expand on that there are a lot of such areas and in 2014-2020 we will have two additional areas where funds will be concentrated, that is energy and cultural policy areas. So these two new areas will help us achieve growth in our competitiveness. In Lithuania, in the new period, we will try to achieve much more in through the measures of financial, financial engineering. This means investment of funds rather than simple distribution of funds. This process would allow the processes which are under development, for example, renovation of buildings or building of infrastructure objects to attract private funds. In this way, one invested euro will be tripled or even increased by four. Concerning the European goals, um, the lesson we have learned from the from the Lisbon strategy and the, the partial, I um, wouldn't say failure, but non-achievements, um, is um, that we uh, uh, didn't break down European goals uh, at the national, if possible, regional level. And this is exactly what we are doing now. So if we are talking, for instance, of, about a European goal uh, concerning the R&D rate of 3% by the end of uh, 2020, each of the member states has to identify its individual goal. Uh, so I'm not aware about the R&D rate of uh, um, uh, Lithuania. What small, is... very small. Yeah, but uh, if... Shamefully small. <laughs> no, it's about the, the individual development of such a figure. So it's, it's unrealistic that Lithuania will have 3% by the end of 2020. But if it's able to increase uh, its rate of, uh, at about 30, 40, 50% from the current level, it's already an uh, important contribution to the achievement of the overall goal. So the overall European goals are laid down in the, and agreed in the Europe 2020 Goals agenda. There we have defined, for instance, R&D rate of 3% by the end of 2020, the portion of renewable energy 20%, uh, then a reduction of the poverty, uh, an increase of employment rate. All this is defined. And the next step was and is to break down these European goals at the national and, where appropriate, regional level. This is when we are talking about ambitious but realistic goals. And if each region is able to achieve these goals, it will definitely contribute to the overall European goals. That's why we have this strong alignment between EU 2020 and the use of structural funds, because and when we are talking about added value, it's uh, clearly because of this uh, correlation between European goals and concrete projects contributing to these goals. And the last question. Uh, Eugene Solonina, Radio Liberty, Ukrainian service of Radio Liberty. My question is uh, how the results of future uh, summit in Vilnius can, uh, in case of Ukraine, can impact to the European cohesion policy, to the European economy and in other parts of European life? Thank you. Well, uh, I think uh, for the moment it's, it's not a, a satisfying uh, situation. Uh, we have done a lot, uh, and if you see the reaction of the Ukraine public, uh, there is a huge disappointment about uh, the latest developments. Uh, we have still some days, uh, but nevertheless we have to continue. Ukraine is part of Europe, and uh, this is our understanding and whatever we can contribute, we will do. And uh, not to become tired, uh, if you have uh, 
Um, if you have not succeeded uh, for the moment, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, not a shame, but it should be, uh, should be a good reason to try it again, because I think there's a clear understanding, and again, the reaction are crystal clear. So uh, we have a lot of uh, opportunities, also in terms of cross-border programs, of uh, neighborhood policy programs, etc. And this we will certainly uh, use. And uh, in that respect, I'm, I'm uh, as somebody know already, I'm a member of the party of the half full class and not of the half empty class. Dear Commissioner, dear Minister, thank you. Thank you very much. Dear colleagues, thank you for questions and for attention.